Hi, this is Michael Alters, and we're back with the cardiovascular system, vasodilators, and antihypertensives, and this is part three. Before we go any further, it's worthwhile to review the renin angiotensin aldosterone pathway and all of the components. It begins with angiotensinogen, which is synthesized in the liver, and that compound is converted into angiotensin 1 by means of renin, and renin is secreted from the kidney. Angiotensin 1 then goes to the lungs where it's converted to angiotensin 2, and that's facilitated by angiotensin converting enzyme, or ACE. Angiotensin 2 serves two functions in the body. It causes vasoconstriction and also retention of sodium and water. Angiotensin 2 also goes to the adrenal gland where it stimulates the release of aldosterone, and aldosterone like angiotensin II, also stimulates sodium and water retention. So we want to keep this pathway in mind as we start learning about ACE inhibitors, angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors, which act at this spot right here in the conversion from angiotensin I to angiotensin II. By blocking this enzyme, we have a deficit of angiotensin II and aldosterone, and therefore patients should vasodilate, and secrete sodium and water, and these should both act as a diuretic and to lower blood pressure. ACE inhibitors are actually the, the first-line therapy for systemic hypertension in many patients, as well as in the treatment of heart failure. There are studies that show reversal of left ventricular hypertrophy and increased, uh, rather improved outcomes in diabetic patients, and when plasma aldosterone is decreased, as we said before, it reduces sodium and water retention. There are many ACE inhibitors. They all end in pril, like enalapril, quinapril, lisinopril, and ramipril. The most common side effect with ACE inhibitors is cough, a non-productive, annoying cough, and other allergic-like symptoms. And this may be due to accumulation of bradykinins in the lung tissue. Many of the other side effects that we see with uh, other antihypertensive drugs are absent in ACE inhibitors, which is a positive. So things like depression, insomnia, sexual dysfunction, and electrolyte imbalances are less common with ACE inhibitors. Patients who already have renal dysfunction may see a further decrease in their glomerular filtration. And so that might be a population who would uh, use these drugs with caution. Another common side effect is hyperkalemia, and that's because the lower aldosterone levels cause secretion and excretion of sodium and retention of potassium. Another important thing about ACE inhibitors is that a subset of the population has an allergy to them causing very profound angioedema of the tongue, the lips, and the face. ACE inhibitors are metabolized and then renally excreted. Here are some impressive pictures of angioedema, first of the lip, of the lips and the face and even the eyes, and the classic picture of angioedema of the tongue. One thing that we should be aware of in patients who take ACE inhibitors is there are many reported and documented cases of prolonged hypertension that occurs under general anesthesia in patients who are taking ACE inhibitors. And commonly, we consider holding this medication for at least 24 hours prior to surgery. A phenomenon that's been called vasoplegic syndrome occurs, where nitric oxide synthesis and vascular guanylate cyclase activation is dysregulated in patients who are taking ACE inhibitors. And these patients can actually become unresponsive to fluid boluses and sympathomimetic agents and vasopressors. Vasopressin is commonly used as a vasopressor of choice in these patients. And in patients who are having major surgeries, um, maybe surgeries with uh, cardiopulmonary bypass or other major vascular and cardiac surgeries, may become quite hypotensive. And in those patients, often ACE inhibitors are held for several days prior to surgery. Incidentally, one of the other treatments for vasoplegic syndrome is thought to be methylene blue, which inhibits synthesis of nitric oxide and guanylate cyclase, thereby decreasing uh, GMP and, vascular, and, and decreasing vascular smooth muscle relaxation.
Another drug related to these are the angiotensin II receptor blockers. <clears throat> these drugs act just a little bit later in the same pathway. Here we see the spot where ACE inhibitors act. Angiotensin II receptor blockers will act here and prevent the action of angiotensin II, thereby also preventing the synthesis of aldosterone. These include drugs like losartan, which is Kozar, and valsartan, which is Diavan. So these drugs will inhibit the hypertensive effect of angiotensin II, perhaps with a lower incidence of cough. We still expect to see hyperkalemia, and that will occur especially when these drugs are used together with other potassium-sparing diuretics. These drugs are metabolized in the liver, and overall they seem to be very similar to ACE inhibitors, and as a result you may want to discontinue these drugs as well prior to major surgery. That's it for this section. Please let me know if you have any questions, and we'll look forward to seeing you in class and for the next video.